My name is Michelle Sagardo, and I am a designer, photographer, and gummy bear enthusiast from Connecticut. I grew up in Illinois with parents who valued a hard work ethic. I was an avid reader, I participated in every sport, and I aspired to be a fashion designer and an astrophysicist. Although I had an active childhood, I remember one time when we went to my family's lake house and we had just arrived and I started feeling nauseous and dizzy and my eyelids got so heavy, I felt like I had been drugged. I ended up sleeping for hours and when I woke up, I realized that I had missed out on kayaking and swimming with my family. My dad walked in and gave me this look like interesting priorities. Unfortunately, that drugged feeling was not a one-time thing. And whenever that sensation hit, I needed to sleep. Other strange things started happening. I played tennis in high school. And I remember one time when I was on the court with my doubles partner. I went to hit the ball and I noticed that my grip just loosened on my racket and my hand felt floppy. I ended up returning my opponent's serve over the fence and we had to stop play. It had disrupted another match. It was mortifying. This was not something that had that ever happened to me. But this sensation kept happening and sometimes I would even just drop my racket altogether. I trained with my dad, who was an elite athlete, and he asked me, Michelle, what are you doing? Why are you goofing off? And I was completely dumbfounded. I had no idea what was going on. There was another time when I was taking a nap and I heard the front door open and somebody walk up the stairs. I was sleeping in my bed, but I, this had woken me up a little bit, and I remember seeing somebody open the door, and it was this completely strange man I'd never seen before, and it was so scary. When he saw that I was asleep, he went to the bathroom, and I thought, okay, get up out of the bed, get out of the house. And I tried to get up, but I could not move a muscle. And I tried to scream, but no noise would come out. After maybe five minutes, I was able to drag myself out of bed. I felt so heavy. And I ran down the stairs, out the front door, and as soon as my feet hit the grass, I came to. And I realized that I was still in my bed. There was no man, but the experience was so real that I did have to get up, walk out of the house, go on a walk because it was something that had just happened to me, but I looked around and none of it was real. My parents noticed some of my struggles. And when I was eight years old, I was diagnosed with and medicated for ADD. When I was 15, I was diagnosed with and medicated for anxiety and depression. I continued having that drugged feeling I graduated college and I remember when I started graduate school, I went to a concert with my husband and we were so excited. We've been looking forward to it and I collapsed and my husband helped me to the paramedics and they were poking and prodding me and is she drugged? Is she drunk? What's going on? And my husband said, she's stone cold sober. And this experience landed me in a neurologist's office. Ultimately, she diagnosed me with this very specific type of migraine that put me at a high risk for stroke. And so our only instructions when we left that office were that my husband needed to keep an eye out to see if I was having a stroke, which is just terrifying. There were no medical implications. It was just, you are a time bomb. Around this same time when my best friend spent the night, 
and we were watching our favorite comedian and I was laughing so hard. And I turned to her and I said, don't you hate it when you get morning hands at night? And she looked at me and said, what the heck are morning hands? And I said, you know, when your right hand turns into your left hand. And she said, Michelle, that's not a thing. But I had talked about this with my husband, probably since we had started dating. We would wake up in the morning, I would have morning hands, and I would say, can you please open this jar? How are your morning hands? I have really bad morning hands, can you open this? And he would say, my morning hands are fine. Yes, I'll open this. And I just remember like this light bulb, it was starting to flicker and I was realizing, okay, something is not right. Apparently this isn't normal. I was in graduate school. I was working on my PhD in economics, which was so exciting. And yet things were just not going as planned. I started noticing differences between my peers and myself. And we would all be studying after classes but I would sneak away to sleep under my desk. And I thought maybe they just have more self-control. Maybe I'm lazy. I mean, I need to get this under control, but I don't know how. I was also leaving school around 4 p.m. every day, and I would go home, pass out, and wake up the next morning unprepared without my homework done. I could almost see myself from outside and think, I know that I'm better than this. I know I'm more capable than this, but there was no connecting these two selves. I had to retake my qualifying exams and rewrite my field paper. Both of these were major milestones in my program. And I felt completely confused and disheartened. After this experience, I ended up taking a leave of absence. I tried one last time to get a new doctor. This time, thinking that I had diabetes, I thought, I went into her and I said, I have diabetes, I get tired after I eat food, I get tired during the day, I'm tired all the time. And she said, I'm going to refer you to a sleep neurologist. It wasn't even on my radar. I thought, I sleep all the time. I don't need a sleep neurologist. I'm really good at sleeping. The night before the appointment, I told my husband, I do not want to go to this appointment. I don't want to go pay somebody to sit in that chair and have them tell me, you're just depressed. Now, I take depression very, very, very seriously, but I also knew that some of my physical complaints could not be summed up by the depression diagnostic criteria. My husband pushed me to go. This new sleep neurologist ordered a sleep study. And I said, what if the test comes back negative? Do you think that this is depression? And I will never forget what he said. I don't know if this is depression, but depression doesn't cause all of these symptoms and undiagnosed sleep disorders cause depression. And I burst into tears because that was the first time that I had ever sat across from a doctor who saw me, who saw the problem, and who was committed to helping me figure out what was wrong. <laughs>